portals are pretty weird, but at the same time incredibly fascinating. They beg the question, how do portals work? And I don't mean physically, in real life, I mean how are they actually programmed? What techniques go into making a convincing portal effect? To find out, I spent weeks figuring out how to create portals myself, and it's not as easy as you might think. First off, I scoured the internet for existing solutions. Most of them boil down to one basic principle. Use two cameras and two portals. Each portal has a camera pointing outwards and each portal surface is rendered by the other camera. It seems simple enough, you just let the camera sit on the portal surface pointing outward. So let's see what it looks like in game. As you can see it just looks like we're running into a flat painting. And this becomes even more clear when we walk sideways. What is visible through the portal depends on the position you're standing, so a static camera doesn't really work. Okay, so think of a portal as just a window. You see something different out of this window when you stand somewhere else, like here in Portal 1. So we have to change our camera angle based on where we are relative to the portal. After all, the only difference between a portal and a window is that with a portal, the other side of the window is simply somewhere else. For example, if you're standing in position A and you look at point B, you have a direct line of sight. Translating this to portals, we just need to rotate our camera standing on the surface of the portal to have that same sightline. In other words, the angle from A to the portal should be exactly the same as the angle from the camera to B. That way, our portal camera always shows what happens on the other side, taking our location into account. So let's see what it looks like in game when we actually rotate our camera. There's still something wrong here. Our camera does rotate the way it should, but it doesn't look like a portal yet. That is because right now, only the very centers of the camera and the player's view are lined up correctly. But what about the rest of our view? As you can see, if we stand at point A in front of a portal, and our camera is rendering from the surface of that portal, the field of view is completely wrong. What you want to see is entirely different from what our portal camera sees. We aren't looking through a window. Instead, the portal shows something that looks more like a pinhole camera. And the further we get away from the center, the more distorted our sightlines become. And that is why our portal still looks weird. So, how do we fix it? We could widen our camera's field of view, but that still wouldn't completely fix the sightlines. A better solution is to move the camera back through the wall. For example, if you're three steps behind the portal, the camera at the other portal also needs to be three steps behind the wall. And there we go. Sightlines fixed, let's try it out. Hmm, we're almost there. But we forgot one vital thing, distance. As you can see, things look strangely far away right now and kind of distorted. So what exactly is going wrong? Suppose we're standing at point A and we're looking at point B through a portal. If point B is three steps away from the portal and you are also three steps away from the portal, it should look like it is only six steps away. But because we pushed our camera back, the distance is actually 3 plus 3 plus another 3, so 9 steps away. But how do we fix this problem? Obviously, we can't move the camera back forward again, because that would mess up our sidelines. And we can't really mess with our field of view for exactly the same reason. So it seems that whatever we do, something is going to break. But sometimes the best way to answer one question is to ask another question. What exactly is distance? How do we perceive the distance of objects? Well, the smaller an object is in our field of view, the further away it seems. In other words, the distance we perceive is directly related to how large those objects appear to us. And this is key to solving our problem. What our portal camera currently sees is this. But what our camera actually should see is this. After all, it can only see what is through the other side of the portal. So, to solve our distance problem, we just have to scale up this image to the camera's resolution. And now we can see our portal effect is working perfectly. And that is basically all we need for the visual aspect of portals. However, it's not just the visuals that make a portal work. You also need to seamlessly move from one portal to the other. The basics are about what you expect. Teleport the player from one portal to the other. However, the timing of this teleportation is key. If we teleport too early or too late, the illusion falls apart and the player will notice something's off. But if we teleport just when the player's center passes through the portal surface, you wouldn't even notice it at all. Perfect. But we haven't solved collisions yet. 
When building games with intricate physics engines, it is important that the game knows when two objects collide or not. With portals, we need to be able to pass through the portal, but not through the wall the portal is sitting on. Now I'm not entirely sure how Valve solved this problem, but I just want to explain my wonderfully simple solution that seems to work just fine under most circumstances. So here's my idea. As long as we're touching the portal surface, we just disable the player's collider. This makes sure we can pass through any wall the portal is sitting on. However, this introduces another problem. So, how do we solve this problem? Make some kind of portal mask and temporarily cut a hole in the face of the wall? Or storing what wall the portal is sticking to and just disabling that wall when we touch the portal? Yes, we could do that, or we could just make a small, solid edge around the portal to stand on. As long as we're inside the portal, the only thing we can collide with is the outer edges of the portal. And this allows us to stand halfway inside a wall without ever colliding with that wall. It's a cheap trick, but as far as I can see, it just works, so good enough? Other objects should also properly collide with our portal. Currently, our portals are nothing more than a flat surface showing the view of a camera. And if you look closely, you can see signs that this is also happening in the actual game. Notice how the lighting on the cube seems slightly off where it is touching the portal surface. But then, wouldn't it look strange if we were to pass a cube through this surface? Right now, yes, that would look strange. Our cube would be pushed inside the surface and at some point just plop out the other side. Let's just quickly jump into the game so I can show you what is going on. We place two portals on the ground and make a cube fall from portal to portal. We see the cube go from portal to portal, but what happens if the cube is halfway through the portal? It appears as though the cube is cut in two, where one part sticks out of the other portal. But in reality there's not just one cube, there are two. After all, we can just make a copy of the cube and place it at exactly the same position relative to both portals. And if we do just that, it works perfectly well and actually looks pretty convincing. Finally, we have one more aspect to take care of. Momentum, a function of mass and velocity, is conserved between portals. In layman's terms, speedy thing goes in, speedy thing comes out. We retain our speed going through a portal, and currently teleporting removes all speed and thus momentum that a player still has, and we don't want to lose that information. Luckily, this is an easy one to solve. When we move from one portal to the other, we just have to store the velocity we currently have. And once we teleport it, just apply that velocity again in the direction the portal is facing. So to recap, our portals look realistic, we can go from one portal to the other, we can move through portals, objects can move through portals, and we retain our velocity when moving between portals. And that pretty much covers the basics of portals. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I did making it. Until next time, and for now, I hope you're at least a bit wiser.